Hey there, wanted to show you the uh, new terrain system that I've put together for 40 days. Uh, this terrain system is a complete replacement of uh, Unity's uh, built-in terrain system. Um, so what you're seeing here is, is a mesh uh, which was made in Sculptress, which is a very simple, uh, easy to use uh, 3D sculpting program. It's actually free and it's a great program if you want to play around with it. Um, and this terrain represents probably 10 minutes worth of modeling work. Um, what's really powerful about the new system I put together is the texturing is all done procedurally uh, in the shader. So it's all done in real time. So none of the uh, texturing of this, uh, of this little island here um, was done by hand. And it wasn't even done by, uh, by another uh, system. Uh, this is a replacement of um, the old workflow that I put together, which was to use uh, World Machine to uh, to generate the uh, generate height maps, which were then turned into meshes in in uh, Unity's terrain system, and also using World Machine to generate splat maps. Um, the problems I faced with using World Machine um, it's a it's a really good program, and if you look at the uh, the, if you look at pictures online of terrains created with World Machine, they look great. Um, but the problem is they generally look great from 30,000 feet. Um, and unless you're, uh, unless you're uh, uh, making a flying game, um, in my experience, they're not going to look that great on the ground from, from person level, from the, you know, the one meter scale. Um, and I think that's a fundamental limitation of um, world building machines. Um, so I was never really happy with the results coming out of there. And the other major problem I was facing with uh, World Machine uh, 2 Unity, um, for one, I had to use it in parallels, which added another, another layer of indirection, but also needed to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll walk around here a bit while I'm talking, also, also needed to uh, generate and export several different things, um, a color map, a splat map, and a height map. So the whole process for iterating was very, very slow. Um, and again, World Machine um, you know, is really sort of a, a high-level tool. And it's really hard to get a sense for what you're working on a World Machine from a person scale. It's not really made for that. It's really hard to, uh, to work and iterate at a person scale. So anyway, so I've been working on uh, a replacement for that or I've been trying to come up with a replacement for that. And yesterday I put together this shader, and it's just combining a few different concepts that I've picked up from other uh, terrain shaders. Um, and what it is is basically a replacement of the, uh, the node-based height map generation that I had set up in World Machine. And in World Machine, you generate height maps. You can, or sorry, splat maps. You can generate splat maps. Um, with their, their node-based system by, by having a few different uh, um, uh, choices in your nodes. Uh, you can, you can, or a few, a few different basic rules. So you can set up a terrain based on, for example, height or uh, slope or convexity, etc. cetera. And, uh, and then generally you'll add in some noise and you'll end up with an organic looking result. Well, it occurred to me that you could very easily do those same things in a shader. And if you did it, uh, if you made it simple enough, it wouldn't be much of a performance hit. Um, so this is this is a this is only uh, what you're seeing here is only uh, eight textures. Two of those textures are noise textures, um, which technically could be combined. Uh, it's uh, the shader hasn't been optimized yet. Um, so this is really seven textures, um, and the textures I'm using here are just the the generic. Um, free textures that Unity's terrain system comes from. And if you've looked at them before, they're not great textures. If you were to spend uh, an equal amount of time modeling and texturing this um, using Unity's terrain system and using those same textures, it would, it would likely look horrible unless you're, uh, unless you're really, really good at it. Um, but even if you're really good at Unity's terrain system, it's very time consuming to get real, really organic results. Anyway, so the solution here is to completely disconnect uh, the, the terrain generation um, from the texturing. 
Uh, and what's really great about this is, uh, one, it's a lot faster, and two, um, the train can now be modified on the fly. Or, I mean, not in the game, but, but it's possible to switch over to Sculptress, um, uh, make some adjustments. So let's say you, you think, you know, this, this particular point on the hill is a little bit too bumpy, a little bit too jagged. So I can go back into Sculptress, and I can smooth this area, or I can, I can add polygons to this area. I can then re-import it into Unity's Assets folder, and it will update on the fly. And since the texturing, since there's basically no UVs being used from the mesh itself, the texturing is all done procedurally, um, nothing has to be retouched. So if I, for example, were to create a new cliff here at this point, when it re-imports, it would automatically get textured like a cliff. Um, so that's, uh, in terms of being able to iterate and save time and leverage uh, you know, what time you do have, I think it's really a great solution. Um, to put this in perspective, I have yet, with all the time that I've put into World Machine and Unity Strain System, I have yet to develop anything that looks this organic. And what you see here represents just a few hours worth of work. Um, so to me, it seems like a really superior system. Uh, there are a couple tricks used here. One is, uh, you know, a healthy dose of Perlin noise, which gives you a lot of the organic transitions. A um, few basic rules, um, like measuring uh, or, or checking uh, world space in the shader and also uh, your world normals, so what, what, what the slope is on the terrain. Um, and it's pretty straightforward. The, the trick to this is you use, uh, instead of using UV coordinates, which you don't have, you use world space coordinates, and then you can simply multiply those coordinates or divide those coordinates to give different frequency rates for the, for the uh, texture tiling. Uh, it's very simple to do. The whole shader is probably 40 lines of code. Um, the, next, the other trick that I put in here was uh, something that's pretty popular in uniforms called uh, multi-UV mixing. And what that does is it, it allows you to mix uh, different textures at different tiling rates or different frequency rates based on distance. And I haven't optimized it, so you can actually see the transition here. Um, as we move in, you can see it, you can see it change. Um, and there are, ways to, uh, there are ways to make that transition less noticeable. Um, but again, this shader hasn't been optimized yet. Uh, but what's great about this is you can see that you get really up close here and you've got a lot of high frequency information. The texture looks very detailed. Looks like you can almost climb on it. And then you look over here, and of course this is the exact same material with the same textures, and you see absolutely no tiling. And what's happening is there are actually three layers or three levels of detail of, uh, of frequencies or tiling rates being blended together. And that allows you to use textures you generally wouldn't be able to use in this situation. You generally wouldn't be able to use a texture this noisy um, without seeing significant tiling over here. Or you wouldn't be able to get in this close and see any detail. Um, so that's kind of the, you know, that's kind of the built-in, uh, one of the built-in limitations of texturing uh, very large uh, areas uh, in a 3D engine. So this solution seems to work pretty well. Um, each texture here is, you can see also, uh, we've got some details here. Each texture has uh, a detailed texture. And I don't mean a detailed texture in terms of using a grayscale image um, and then blending that in at close distances. These are actually just two different sand textures. Uh, and I've added in some very basic color corrections so they can be made to look exactly alike. And they're, they're blended together using the same Perlin noise that's used everywhere else in the, sh same, in the shader. The same noise gets used over and over again, uh, just at different rates, different frequencies, um, or different by, by multiplying or dividing the noise value um, to get different uh, uh, noise uh, tiling rates. So it's, it's virtually the same noise is used over and over again, which makes it very efficient but it's virtually impossible to tell uh, when you look at it. When you look at it, it looks very organic. Um, and the other upside to, to this type of system is you can, you can tweak this shader until you get exactly the results you want, and those, uh, you know, those results will get updated in real time to all the different land areas you have set up 
in your game. Um, so it's very uh, it's very efficient, very efficient in terms of the time you put into it and the results you get. Um, and again, these detail these uh, detail rocks, these meshes, are using the same material in the same shader. And again, these this is actually the same mesh. It took me about one minute to make it in uh, in Sculptress, and then you just drop it in here. It gets automatically automatically textured. And I can show you a bit of how this works. We pop into scene view here. We zoom into our rock. Uh, you can actually see. It's a little bit hard to see because of the the wireframe, but you can actually see the uh, the texture is staying in the same place. And that's because it's using world coordinates um, for the for the uh, instead of UV coordinates. And uh, one of the limitations then is that you can't use this for moving objects. I'm not sure you'd want to anyway. Um, having said that, there's probably a pretty simple workaround for that as well. Um, so the water here is just uh, the water that comes with Unity, and uh, that may or may not get updated. There are very there are no uh, none of the waves that have been developed earlier. Uh, here, not 100% sure I'm going to use in the final game because of some limitations it had. Um, but anyway, this is the uh, the new terrain system. So that the different smaller islands, they're going to be several smaller islands now. They're going to be uh, all done with the same terrain system, and we'll be able to put them together very quickly. Uh, the next step for this is to uh, to uh, the the placement of detail message, meshes uh, like grass and trees and rocks. Uh, they're going to be done similarly using Perlin noise or some kind of noise. Um, and they're going to be done dynamically or procedurally in the same way. Um, so that's getting worked on now. And if that uh, works as planned, um, these, these uh, areas, these organic looking areas should be very quick to develop, um, which will speed up the uh, development of the game. So that's all. Thanks for uh, watching.